Alright guys, I am taking this old box that was handed down to me from someone else who stopped scrapbooking, and I am making a charging station for my nightstand, which is always a mess. So this is uh, called Cement Board. It's from the hardware store, and it's a lot like the mesh that a lot of us use. Uh, it's a little bit more expensive. I think it's a little bit stickier maybe, and it's gray, which is nice because you don't have to worry about coloring it. So just took it and applied it randomly and what I'm trying to do here is putting matte medium down and this matte medium was very bad it was very at the bottom so I'm watering it down and uh, now it's kind of the consistent consistency excuse me of Mod Podge and uh, I'm trying to get that book pack <laughs> book page to stick just in certain spots for this to really work I think I would have to let it dry completely and I'm just not that patient so it wasn't working so what I end up doing is just holding it down where I glued it and just ripping so you'll see that momentarily because yeah I just don't have tight time to let this sit and dry and anybody got time for that So yeah, there there you go. Mixed media right there. Tearing book pages. There you go. You're now a pro. So I'm just trying to get a very random look. Uh, with this box I'm trying to achieve a very specific look and I'll go into that in a minute. Okay, so what I'm showing you here is I am embossing, dry embossing with my Vagabond, the aluminum foil tape from the hardware store. And what I do is I cut a slit in my embossing folder, as uh, Tim Holtz does, so he can get his tags through. And what I do is I, and I'm trying to do this one-handed, so I'm sorry, it's very awkward, uh, but I did want to show you how I do this. So essentially what I do is I slip one in through, emboss it, pull it, slide it through the uh, embossing folder a little bit more until I get to the end and ooh, that's extreme close up whoa so uh, then I just kinda slide it over just a little bit to one side or back to the other side or in the middle and it gives it a different look so it's not uniform all the way down it and uh, just pop it right back through my die cutting machine while making you dizzy and then you get a continuous long piece of embossed aluminum tape so yeah, and then you can just rip it from there. This, uh, so I'm I'm adhering that tape down now, and because it's so deeply embossed, it it doesn't lose it uh, the embossing when I push it, uh, burnish it down with my finger. So, and the black mesh that you just saw is black mesh I got from the hardware store again. That's one of my favorite places for art drawing supplies. It's cheap and uh, really great texture. The, uh, so the black mesh is something I got to uh, cover up the gate, and these are Heidi Swap color shines, by the way, the silver and the black, black velvet and silver, whatever. So yeah, go out and buy color shine, silver, whatever. Ask the person at Michael's, they'll think you're nuts. Uh, so that black mesh, I will get to this. I, I do this all the time. So I, I digress. Uh, it is essentially just plastic mesh to keep my dog in, and I have a whole bunch left over, and I love it. I use it all the time. I use it for stencils. I spray through it. I glue it to things, and it's a lot of fun. So I just essentially sprayed the color shine on and um, used a rag to help kind of pounce some of it back up. I want a very uneven look, which is good because that's what I got. So now I'm just going to hot glue this down, and I'm just adhering it in spots. And because hot glue dries so quickly, I didn't really worry too much about whether or not it was going to dry, because what I do is I just get it where I really want it to stick, and then I stick it down, and then grab my heat gun and hold it there and essentially remelt the, gun, uh, the glue underneath. And uh, once it's remelted, then I can just push down real hard, let it reset, and it's good to go. So now I'm just adding a little bit of ribbon. Uh, th the look I'm going for with this box is um, our bedroom is all Japanese, so yeah, I'm not going for Japanese, <laughs> obviously. But um, I wanted something kind of industrial, kind of masculine, because our room is very 
kind of delicate and very feminine. Um, that is just a little die cut shape from Spellbinders. I think it's labels 18 or 16, one of the two. And I just die cut it and dry embossed it with that same embossing folder. And I'm using archival ink to ink around the edges and a little bit on the top. And then I'll die cut out a piece of chipboard and adhere that to that with tacky glue that's coming up. So I can keep talking, so you see. <laughs> um, so yeah, our room is, it's, it's not feminine, um, but it's, we have a green, a green wall and the rest is tan and a lot of white accents and I have uh, samurai swords up and a lot of uh, really cool stuff. Some vases with, or vases, with orchids. Um, so I wanted something that was very masculine to help kind of offset that, yet slightly feminine. So I end up putting some feminine touches like the ribbon and there's a couple other coming up. So. I really like how this comes out though. I, I I like it a lot. So there I am adhering it. I just spread the Aleens on with the credit card. I'm still using that original bottle of tacky glue. I really, that's just sad that I still have that. Can't even imagine how old that is. So I'm taking this little chipboard piece which was already pre-cut and um, I'm just spraying the color shines, the same colors as on the box. And as you can see, just dabbing my finger, I want it kind of irregularly colored. And then I took the rest of that ink and I mopped it up in my one of my journals. Sprayed it with a little bit of water first and poof, instant gray background. So I thought I cut this part out and I didn't, so there I am drawing it. You're welcome. And I'm taking embossing ink, uh, the Distress Ink from Tim Holtz, and um, I'm just, you know, generously putting it on. And I love that stuff. It smells so good. It's like cinnamon. Mm. So I'm taking UT and uh, just pouring it on there. I'm not worried too much about how it's getting covered. Uh, if you've ever used UT, you know that usually your first application is not perfect, and that was actually the look I was going for. I didn't want to do multiple layers and have it be like perfectly glossy and glassy. I like the fact that it looked like it was wet, like wet metal. So I end up just heat embossing it and, yeah, gluing it down. I'll show you a little close-up of this in a second, but it's really cool. It does. It looks like wet metal. One spot didn't get embossed, so I went back over that. So there you go. Really cool. It looks like wet metal, like water drops on there. So I just added a couple staples randomly on that piece uh, in three spots uh, just to give it a little bit more detail. And now I am hot gluing the label shape onto the swirly shape and then using some adhesive foam to give it some dimension and make it stand up. Oh, and if you can't tell, I put some stickers on there. It says charge it up. Just thought it was cute. And I think they were both recollections set. And these are all flowers from Michael's, uh, except for those Petaloo ones. I think those are from, I got them from Tuesday morning. Those little white ones with the yellow centers. And this is where I, I started grabbing some feminine touches because it is a room I share with my wife, so I don't mind some femininity. Um, that, let's be honest, I, I, I like femininity. It's, it's all good. I just didn't want the entire box to be extremely feminine or extremely masculine. I wanted it to be a nice balance between the two. So I'm just going in and dyeing all of these. Uh, the, the blue ones obviously didn't match with what I was going with, so I knew the color shines. They're so very pigmented and, uh, have so much shine in them that I knew they would cover up that blue. So I'm just going in and rolling them all about. I want your loving, I want your revenge. You and me, we'd ride up. I love that song. I love her. Shock, right? 
And then for some of them, the, the, the colors were good. I'm just kind of swiping through it. I didn't want to color the whole thing. Just kind of add, like, splotches, make them look kind of dirty. Went with that sort of industrial look that I was going for. So now we're going to come back and build up that layer. I don't very often play with paper flowers. If I do, it's usually because I'm working on something for a, a, a woman. So I don't have a very big stash of them, but I would love to get my hands on some I Am Roses, but I, I don't want to spend the money on them. And I wouldn't use them that often, but when I do, it'd be worth it. One day. I got a huge haul for my birthday. Oh my gosh, I got so many new products. I think I use almost every one of my brand new products in my next ABCs of Art journaling page, which the page has done, and I like how it came out, and all I have to do is edit the video, so woohoo. So the flower arrangement's done. I'm just going back with those color shines. Oh, it's tinsel. It's tinsel. It's not silver, whatchamahoos, or whatever I called it. So uh, I wanted to go back in and just add some more color over... That black piece was just standing out too much for me. Um, and then I took this tool circle and I just kind of cut it irregularly, just smushed it up, and then uh, used my tiny attacher to staple the bottom, cut off the excess, and sprayed it with those same two colors again. Um, I just sprayed it on the mat and dunked it, and it just tinted it just enough. I didn't want it plain white, but some parts are white. Then I'm just hot gluing it into the top so it just kind of sticks out. Gives some nice dimension. And then I'm grabbing some gesso from my hand soap bottle and uh, just adding it here and there. I wanted a kind of, again, an industrial or shabby kind of look without it being too feminine. So I thought this really jazzed it up a bit. I end up taking that black mesh on the top left off. I just didn't, it wasn't mel melding with the page. It just stuck out like a sore thumb to me. It looks better on camera, I think, than it did in person. Like, I don't mind looking at it now, but mm -mm, I did not like it. Just looked like someone just stuck it there for no reason. Cleaning up my gesso. Yep, it's part of the process. Drying. I had a, a really hard time with some of the, the aluminum tape, especially on the those corners, I, just because it, it put so much ten tension on it when you close it and open it, so I had a hard time with that. But really all that's left is I'm putting a hole in the back for my cords to go through, and then on the inside I did end up putting a piece of elastic, but I made it too tight so they don't go through. I didn't want the cords falling back through the hole, uh, but I have yet to have a problem with it. Uh, so essentially, the, the elastic's on the bottom of the box, on the inside, so you could slip it through the hole and then under the elastic, but yeah, that didn't work out. So here's a close-up of that cluster. I think there's another one, another close-up of the whole box. Yep, there it is. And uh, it looks really good in my room. Here's another picture of it in my room. I love it. Hope you love it, and see you soon. Talk to y'all later. Bye.